and weather control. Jerry Smith says that's only the tip of the iceberg in Alaska, because the extra low frequency waves that HARP generates can also drill much deeper than the ocean. Deep into your brain. That ELF that allows them to see deep in the earth and communicate with deeply submerged submarines is at the same frequency that the human brain works at. Brain waves really are, in part, radio waves. The brain can be influenced by external signals. Mind control? That seems a little far out. But weather manipulation is all too plausible. Jesse drives off to begin the investigation. And he can't shake off thoughts of recent events like the Indonesian tsunami and Hurricane Katrina. Back at his war room, the governor meets with his elite team of investigators, researchers, and operatives, all of them itching to get on the case. All right, people, I want no excuses. What have you come up with? Well, we've got physicist that says that heart can do everything that Jerry Smith told you it can do. And how exactly is he gonna do that? Start a hurricane? Yeah, quite literally. He has a device that shows that you can actually move clouds, and he's going to do this experiment for me. That's interesting. Where do we go from here, people? This photo was actually taken just before the big tsunami hit the coast of Indonesia. And what we're seeing is the aurora borealis, or the northern lights. They occur anytime there's any sort of electromagnetic occurrence in the ionosphere. And they say that when they turn harp on, the colors get really wild up there. And the other thing that's interesting before the tsunami was that there were no pre-tremors or any warning. It just happened. How often are the northern lights yeah. spotted in Indonesia? Why would we Not want northern. to cause a tsunami and kill thousands of Indonesian people? Yeah. Alex, maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they were just experimenting with the thing. They put it up too high and this was the end result. What do you think they're going to do after it happens? Then come out and say, whoops, we made a mistake and fess up to it? I mean, think about it. They're testing a whole new technology, right? Yeah, so here they're testing they this thing. they come up with something new, they got to check it out. And if there's collateral damage from it, that's what they look at. Oh, well, it works. So there was a little collateral damage in it. At least now we know it works. Coming up, the investigation moves to Alaska. And the conspiracy theory is put to the test. Why is there so much military investment? Well, as um, it, the, basically the, I think the military was involved because there was a coming back up. He's conducting communication studies, but a growing conspiracy theory says Hart is actually a weapon with the ability to shoot down aircraft, manipulate nature, and control your mind. Investigation is underway. Alex Piper is touched down in Fairbanks, Alaska. He's here to meet with one of the heads of HARP research. Meanwhile, the governor's advisor, Michael Braverman, is at Stanford University with two HARP researchers. Doctors Morris Cohen and Mark Galkowski have done extensive experimentation at HARP. The HARP facility is a unique um facility for basic research. It's really about understanding of it, really the, a portion of the atmosphere that right now we know very little about. We really hope to understand more about this upper atmosphere group region and uh, understand some of the basic just physical processes that go on there. Alex is not finding the same cooperation in Fairbanks. Hey, Governor, it's Alex. Yeah, so I spoke to the professor. He claims it's strictly there for experiments, research purposes only, that it can't change the weather, it's not a weapon. The problem is, as soon as he saw where I was going with my questions, he refused to be on camera. Yeah, make it what you will. As Alex awaits instructions in Alaska, a visitor arrives at the team's office. Brooks Agnew is a scientist, engineer, and doctor of physics. He spent years studying Arctic weather patterns. He's about to demonstrate the awesome power of this so-called research project. He'll show how Harp's ELF radio waves can actually push around rain clouds in the sky, and in the process, change the weather.
Well, this is a, a basic cloud chamber. I'm going to make a cloud inside of it, stabilize it, make sure it's all nice and still, and then we're going to move it using our impulses. Weather manipulation. The ability to control the weather in specific areas. Is it possible? It's, it isn't remotely possible. The HARP researchers may not be as candid as they appear. They deny HARP can control the weather. But Dr. Agnew shows investigator June Sarpong just how easy the process can be. When I turn the pulses on, this cloud should move from yes. bottom to top. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah.